This video is an introduction to RStudio. In this video, we'll learn how to navigate the various windows in RStudio and also learn how to calculate summary statistics for sets of data. The software R has a fairly clunky interface, so not intuitive. Uh, RStudio was developed as essentially a front-end application. It's called an Integrated Development Environment, or, or IDE, that makes R a whole lot easier to use. And what we're going to do is to look at the different windows in RStudio to understand the functionality of this particular application. We'll notice that there are four distinct windows. One window is called the source window, and it is in this window that one will uh, type your, the scripts, the code that you're going to use to perform your various functions. Scripts can be saved, they can be shared with collaborators or anyone else. Um, they're a useful way to, to save your own, your own work that you can come back and start working on later. So that's the source window here. Down below we have the console. The console is where the output of any work is going to be is going to appear. So the console is where we're going to see the results of the scripts that we write up here in the source window. In the upper right we have the global environment window which among other things gives a list of the various uh, data frames and values that are currently loaded into the working version of R. And down below we have a multi-use panel which can show all the files on your hard disk. Uh, if you have created any plots then they will be appearing here. Packages are added functionality that, uh, that people have contributed to the R community uh, that allow uh, are to be extended to do various and sundry sorts of, of um, functions. Um, the help menu is or the help window is here, always helpful. So we have these four windows, the source window for our scripts. Um, R is primarily a command driven uh, software, so most people are instead of using drop down menus are going to write out the commands. The console is where the results of those commands are going to be printed. The global environment tells us uh, what files that we have open um, and down here again we have the multi-purpose window which is where plots are going to appear and also the list of packages, these add-ons that uh, in enhance the functionality of R. So let's uh, start by going up here to the tools menu and go down to global options. So you can modify the appearance of your copy of RStudio. Uh, you might want to change the pane layout. For instance, you might want to put the, the console in the upper right here, and that will flip-flop it with the environment and, and uh, the global environment uh, window here. You have to have all four windows open, but where you put them uh, is up to you. But I prefer the console down below, so I'm going to return it to where it was. So we'll say OK on that. And let's go back here and look at a different option. You can also change the appearance. And the appearance that I like is this one here with the dark blue background and the lighter colored text. So I'm going to say OK to that. And now the appearance of our studio in my version has changed. So we can use R Studio to do all kinds of uh, arithmetic calculations. So let's just go up here and do some simple math. So if we want to add in R Studio, then we're just going to put our two numbers together with the plus sign. And then on a Macintosh, like I have here, I'm going to hit Command and Return. If you're working on a Windows machine, you'll hit Control and Return. And that runs that line of code, and the output uh, is repeated. Well, the code is repeated in the console, but also the result, the output, is in indicated in the console there. So there's an alternative way to run a line of code, and that is you can go up here and hit Run with your mouse. You get the same, the same result. To subtract, 
we're just going to use the hyphen. So, and I can do four minus two with no spaces. That's perfectly fine. Uh, and R will give me the answer. I could do four and a space and then minus with no space. And that's fine as well. To multiply, we don't use the X uh, symbol, but rather we use uh, a star. So 4 star times 67 is equal to 268. And for simple division, just use the backslash, and we get a value like so. Um, we can also use uh, R to uh, raise a number to a an exponent. So if we want to raise 4 to the four and a half power, then we use four and then the caret sign, and then we give the exponent. And so that number is 512. Uh, we can take the square roots of numbers, the square root of 98, for instance, and calculated there quite simply. We can take the logs of numbers. So let's take the log of 100. Now we think about 100 being 10 to the second power. So we might imagine that if we take the log of 100, that should be 2. But in fact, when we do that, we find the answer is 4.60. And that's because the, the log function here is based on natural logs uh, rather than on base 10. So it's base e. If we want to use natural uh, log, uh, the um, base 10, we would simply use log 10, 100, and we'll get the familiar uh, response of 2. So 10 raised to the second power is 100. Now in R, we can assign values to what are called objects. And I'm going to define an object called X. And then I use a left pointed arrow, which is made by using the less than sign and also a hyphen. So you can see the left pointing arrow. That says X is going to receive the value that, that I choose. So I'll call it 45. Um, People that use R uh, translate that particular uh, symbol as gets. So X gets 45. X is going to take on the value of 45. So I will run that. And you'll notice that nothing happens down in the console, that my line of code is repeated, but I don't see any sort of result. But up here in the global environment, I have a new value in my session, and it appears there, and actually the, the value of X is given as well. If I want to see the value of x in the console, all I've got to do is to type x and then command return, and it will be printed down in the console. Let's make another uh, another R object. We'll call this one y. So y is going to get 32. And you can see that y has appeared up in the global environment as well. I'm going to define a third R object. And that's going to be Z. And what I can do is to use my previously defined R objects in uh, various arithmetic functions. So I'm going to multiply X times Y to get the value of Z. And you can see that Z now has this value of 1,440, which is the product of 32 and 25. When you define an R object, there are a couple of uh, things to avoid. One is that you can't begin the name of an R object with a numeral. So if I try something like that, I'm going to get an error. So you can see down in the console an unexpected symbol. And um, I also can't have a space. So um, if I try this, not try this, then I'm going to, get, again, get an unexpected symbol because I have the space there. So don't start uh, an R object name with a numeral, and don't, don't leave spaces in the, uh, in the name of your R object. In R, we often work with vectors. A vector is a column of data, and the data need to be all of the same type, either numbers or dates or characters. So let's create a, a vector, and um, this, this vector I'm going to call D. 
So again, uh, an R object can be a single value, it can be a vector, it can be a data frame, it can be an analysis, it can be a figure. Um, but in this case, we're going to make uh, a vector, and I'm going to use the combine command, which is just C, and then I'm going to give the different values that I want in my vector. And I run that, and now I have a vector that shows up here in my global environment. So I've got um, D, and if I print D to the console, then I see those six numbers like so. There are other ways to create vectors. Um, so we'll have one called E. And for E, I might just want to have uh, a sequence of of integers from 34 to 47. And when I do that, then I have 14 numbers starting at 34 going up to 47 uh, by, by ones. So that's another way to create a vector. We can also create vectors of characters. So, but when we use characters, we have to put them in double quotes. So I'm going to make a vector of people's names. So we're going to have Jill and Bob, comma separating them always, um, Gus, and Betsy. So I'll run that, and now I have uh, yet another vector up here. And again, if I call that down to the console by just typing F and hitting command return, then I see the various components of my of my vector. In R, we primarily are working with data frames. A data frame is a collection of vectors. Now, every vector has to have the same type of, of data in it, but a data frame can have multiple vectors with different kinds of information. So you might have one column in your data frame that is numeric and another might be dates and two more might be uh, character vectors or character columns. In R there are a number of built-in data frames that are available for your use. And what we can do is to just type data and open paren, close paren, that's essentially a wildcard and we hit return on that and we get a list of all the um, the built-in data sets, data frames that are available for use to, to learn R um, and to perhaps extend the uh, analyses that have been done by previous workers. What we're going to do, go back to our, our script here, what, what we're going to do here is to load one of the data frames uh, that's available in R, the trees data frame, and you can see now that trees has shown up in my global environment here. The first thing we want to do when we load a data frame is to get an idea of the magnitude uh, of it. So what we can start with is just asking to see the first few rows. And so we use the head command. So take the head of trees, and that will give us the first six rows as well as the, uh, the column names. So we see we have girth, height, and volume of trees. Uh, these happen to be cherry trees, and we have data for six of the trees in the data frame. Well, how big is the data frame? We might be interested in knowing that. We can ask how many rows there are, so the in row command in trees, and we find that there are 31 rows, each of them corresponding to a given tree. Um, we already know that there are three columns. We can always get the number of columns and the number of rows simultaneously by using the dimension uh, function. So DIM trees, and that will tell us that we have 31 rows and three columns. Uh, another useful way to take a look at your data frame is the structure function, which is abbreviated STR and is usually called the stir command. So if we stir trees, then this tells us that we have uh, a data frame, so that's the class of this particular uh, set of data, 
and we can see 31 observations of three variables. And here are some information on each of the variables. Girth, height, and volume are all numeric, and we get uh, the values of the first few rows, uh, like so. Now that we have our data frame loaded into R, we can do some simple summary statistics. So one thing we can calculate is the mean, and let's just concentrate on girth for this particular um, exercise. So when we are asking for the mean of girth, we have to indicate to R what data frame we're working with. So we're going to do trees, then dollar sign, girth. And down below, you can see that the mean or average girth is 13.25 or so. Here's a, a practice that you can use to save yourself some typing, and that is that you can attach a particular data frame to the current version of R. So we're going to attach trees. And now I don't have to add trees dollar sign whenever I call on girth. So now I can call, I can ask for the median of girth just by typing median like that. So median is easily calculated uh, as, as you can see. We can calculate the standard deviation of girth, the SD function. And we can calculate uh, the maximum value of girth and the minimum value of girth, easily calculated like so. Um, we can also calculate the so-called five-num, or five-number system of girth. And we do that, and we get five numbers down here. The middle one is the median. So that's the median value of the 31 values of girth for these trees. 20.6 is the maximum. We saw that earlier. 8.3 is the minimum. We saw that. The 11.5 is the cutoff for the 25th percentile, and the 15.25 is the cutoff for the 75th percentile. Turns out that this five-number system is used to create box plots. Um, we can also... Um, look at uh, all of the data uh, very quickly with the summary command. So I don't want girth. I want to do it, my whole data frame here. So summary for trees. And what you see is that for each of my, my columns, girth, height, and volume, it provides the mean and the median and the first quartile, the minimum, third quartile, and the maximum. Essentially, it's reproducing the five-number system here and also giving me the mean or the average. So you can get that information very easily for all the numeric data in your data frame by calling the summary function. Now, it's always a good idea to detach a particular data frame once you're done working with it. Otherwise, you can get yourself confused. So I'm going to detach trees, and now it is no longer uh, attached. So if I wanted to know the mean of girth, this command is no longer going to work because I doesn't know that I need to put trees in to indicate the data frame. So I would have to put trees dollar sign back in to make that work. What we're going to do now is to look at a different way of looking at, summer, at summary statistics, and what we're going to do is to use a package to use some of this add-on functionality that is available uh, by the sharing community of R. The particular package that we're going to be using is called the Psych Package, it's developed by some psychologists, and to install a package, we need to run this particular line of code, install packages, and then in double quotes, psych. So we run that particular command, and you can see that in the console that uh, that psych is being uh, loaded into my version of R here. Now, if I go and click over here, on packages, I can scroll down and I can see that there are, I have a number of packages that I sometimes use, but most of them aren't being loaded right now, so I don't simply need them. But if I go down a little bit further, I can see that here, here is Psych. Uh, now, it is available for my use, but it is not currently activated. 
So I need to do that. And there are three ways that you can you can load uh, a package into your current version of R. One is to use the require command. So require psych. And if you watch over here when I run this uh, line of code, you'll see that psych gets checked. So now psych is activated and I can use it. I'll declick to unactivate it. And what I will do is to give a, another way of lo loading a uh, package, and that's to use li the library command, library psych, and it's back again. And then obviously the, uh, another way that you can load a package is just going over here to the package window and just clicking on it. So anyway, psych is now loaded. Let's, uh, let's go back to the trees uh, data frame and with, and by the way, you can always find more information about a particular package or a particular function just by typing question mark and then the package or the function name. So in this case, we're going to ask for some information on psych, the psych package, and a whole lot of information is going to show up here uh, describing uh, all the different functions that are available in uh, the psych package. And we're going to be using these two, describe and describe by. Um, let's go to the trees uh, data frame, and what we're going to say here is just to describe trees. And we get output that um, is complementary to the output that we got with the summary command uh, that we did above. Here we see that uh, girth, height, and volume are all represented by 31 different observations. Uh, here are the three means of each of those variables, the standard deviation, the median. The trim mean is getting rid of the top and bottom 5% extreme values, so we're only we're getting rid of the extreme values. Uh, MAD is a non-parametric measure of, of dispersion. Uh, minimum and maximum, uh, the range is the difference between the minimum and the maximum. Skew and kurtosis are uh, higher moments of of distribution, and SE is the standard error. So you can calculate summary statistics using the psych package that you can't get by, by using the summary command. But let's go now to a different data frame, also built into R. It's called the iris data frame. And you can see that iris is appearing up here in my global environment. So let's start by issuing a stir command just to get an idea of the data. And what we can see is that we have five different columns, five different variables. Four of them are numeric. And they all pertain to a particular portion of the flower of an iris. And then we have a, a final column, species, which is a factor variable. It's going to uh, separate our data into three different species. So we have iris setosa, iris versicolor, and iris virginica. So we have three different uh, species in a single data frame. Let's take a look at the head of iris. And so we can see the, the various values for the, the length and widths of the sepals and of the petals, and also the particular species. We can also look at the tail end of the data frame by using the tail command. And we do that, and now we're seeing information on, the, on Virginica. So we have three different... Uh, species that are all represented in this particular data frame. What we might like to do is to break out the summary statistics for each of the three species. And that's just the perfect uh, situation for the describe by command. So describe and then capital B Y. And then I just need to tell the data frame that I'm working on. And then I need to know what is the classification variable I'm going to split by. And in this case, it's obviously species. So I issue this command and run it. And you can see what I've done is to get all of those summary statistics that we saw earlier for trees, but they're broken down by group. So here are all of those summary statistics for setosa. Here are all the ones for versicolor below, and here are all the ones for virginica uh, at the very last. 
So using uh, packages can greatly extend the functionality of R, and new packages are being released all the time.